Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight I want to start this video off by thanking everyone for offering your prayers for my father. Um, there, We were just talking about the situation. I doctored up his, I changed his bandages, doctored up his wound, and, and uh, I told him, I said, this is, this is the Lord, and, and I got the prayer team together. I got the prayer warriors activated on it, and he said to tell you all, thank you very much for the prayers. Uh, he understands that it could have been way worse and that the Lord, from my perspective, and I told him this, the Lord intervened because it could have gone very different. In the scenario that he was in, If he, it could have gone way, way different situation. Um, the fact that it's not any worse, the fact that the, the damage is pretty much just superficial. Um, it's just a lot of swelling and stuff like that. Um, is uh, amazing. And it's by the grace of God that he's not in worse shape and not, you know, specifically hospitalized. Uh, and, and we talked about, you know, there, there's reasons why some of this times this stuff happens. And I said, it may be the reason is it, the situation you're, you're living in may need to change. And you may need to come live with, he needs to live with somebody closer than what he is. Uh, so we can keep better eye on him and help him out when he needs it. So, I mean, the Lord's got this all in his hands. I'm putting my full trust in him on this. And I just hope my dad does uh, the same thing. But he says very much, very, to thank you guys very much for all of your prayers. Um, because he's seen firsthand how us lifting people up in prayer has changed things. And how the prayers have been answered, sometimes almost immediately. Sometimes even before the prayers given, it's been answered. So the Lord has definitely blessed us richly and uh, blessed us greatly for his glory. Tonight, we're going to be reading out of Exodus 35, 8, Spices for Anointing Oil. The whole verse says, Oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. Let's go up here. We're going to start in Contributions for the Tabernacle. Verse 4, And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord, whoever is of a willing heart. This is key. A lot of people are stuck on that 10%. Even in the Old Testament, when the Lord gave the, the, the command, you will give a, ten, a tenth of what you, what you earn. That tenth was for a specific purpose. It wasn't for general giving. It was for a specific purpose. And that specific purpose was to provide for the tribe of Levi. Everybody else had an inheritance in the land. The tribe of Levi didn't. They were the priests under the Lord. And so people would give a tenth of what they had so that the tribe of Levi would have what they needed. Clothing, food, and everything. Even in the Old Testament, the Lord gave that commanded that your giving should be from a willing heart. Whatever is in your heart to give, give. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet, thread, fine linen, and goat's hair. Notice what he's talking about here? Gold, silver, and bronze, money, and materials to make things for the temple and the tabernacle, and to make tools, and, and whatever else, blue, purple, and scarlet thread. They needed that to make the clothing, fine linen for their clothing, because they all wore fine linen, goat's hair, you, you, you weave that into clothing, Ram skins dyed red, badger skins and acacia wood. All that stuff was for the tabernacle and for them, for the clothing. Oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. Onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. That was for the, the main priest, the high priest. All who are gifted artisans among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle, its tent, its covering, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its sockets. The ark and its poles. They know. They now know where they casted the wings for the two cherubim on the ark. They found it. It's over there where they found the uh, the mountain that uh, over in Saudi Arabia, where the, the the Moses and the children of Israel actually were at. The ark and its poles, with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering. The table and its poles, all the utensils and the showbread. See what all this stuff was for. Also, the lampstand for the light, its utensils, its lamps, and the oil for its light. The incense altar, its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, and the screen for the door at the entrance of the tabernacle. 
the altar of burnt offering with its bronze grating, its poles, all its utensils, and the laver and its base. The hangings of the court, its pillars, their sockets, the screen for the gate of the court, the pegs of the tabernacle, the pegs of the court and the cords, the garments of ministry for ministry in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister as priests. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred. Notice how it gives specific ownership of who came, whose hearts were stirred. Everyone whose heart was stirred came, and everyone whose spirit was willing. The Lord made them able, but they were willing. And they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting and all its service, and for the holy garments. They came both men and women, as many as had a willing heart. Not everybody. Not everybody, but as many as had a willing heart. They were willing, the Lord made them able, and brought earning, or earrings and nose rings, rings of necklaces, all jewelry of gold, that is, every man who made an offering of gold to the Lord. You know, all the little nose rings and all those decorations people put in their face on it. You know, that, that was going on 4,500 years ago. That's not new. It's very old. And he goes on. All these people that were willing to help, helped. Whoever had a willing heart, the Lord made it possible for them to do it. And notice that nothing is mentioned about 10%. It was whatever it was will to you to give, bring it. They brought everything they could. Much use was made of this anointing oil under the law. And that which it represents is of primary importance under the gospel. The Holy Spirit, who anoints us for all holy service, is indispensable to us if we would serve the Lord acceptably. Without his aid, our religious services are but a vain oblation, and our inward experience is a dead thing. Whenever our ministry is without unction, without drive, without motivation, it's not the action, it's the motivation behind the action that's so important. What miserable stuff it becomes. Nor are the prayers, praises, meditations, and efforts of private Christians one jot superior. A holy anointing is the soul of life of the soul and life of piety, its absence the most grievous of all calamities. To go before the Lord without anointing is as though some common Levite had thrust himself into the priest's office. His ministrations would rather have been sins than services. What is the driving force behind what you do? Is it for the love of others? Is it for the glory of God? So we have to learn to make sure of those things. Why am I really doing this? Am I giving that 10% to this church because they guilted me into it? Or because they made me feel like it's a duty? Or am I giving because I want to give? Big difference. Two people can give $10,000 to, to a, a, a church. One may have the right motivation. One may have the, the wrong motivation. Who's worth, whose gift was worth more? The one with the right motivation. Monetarily, it was only 10000 But spiritually, it was way more. May we never venture upon hallowed exercises without sacred anointings. That comes from the Holy Spirit. They drop upon us from our glorious head, Jesus. From his anointing, we who are as the skirts of his garments partake of a plenteous unction. Choice spices were compounded with rarest art and of the apothecary to form the anointing oil, to show forth to us how rich are all the influences of the Holy Spirit. All good things are found in the divine comforter. Matchless consolation, infallible instruction, immortal quickening, spiritual energy, and divine sanctification all lie compounded with other excellencies in that sacred eye salve. The heavenly anointing oil of the Holy Spirit. It imparts a delightful fragrance to the character and person of the man upon whom it is poured. No person can come to faith in Christ without the Holy Spirit. You have to have a little bit of the Holy Spirit in order to make the decision. The Lord has poured his spirit out on all flesh so that none are without excuse. Nothing like it can be found in all the treasuries of the rich or the secrets of the wise. The most valuable thing you can have in your life, this realm or any other, is the Holy Spirit in your heart. It is not to be imitated. It comes alone from God, and it is freely given through Jesus Christ to every waiting soul. Let us seek it, for we may have it may have it this very evening. O oh Lord, anoint thy servants for everyone who is not saved. You merely have to ask. You merely have to reach out and say, Lord, I need to be saved. Please save me. And his Holy Spirit is already on you. 
You want salvation? It's yours. Free. Free. For all of you who are saved, and you know you're saved. You've, you've talked to the Lord. You've wrestled out in prayer. You know you're standing in his grace. Ask for more anointing. Ask for more Holy Spirit. Ask for more learning, more teaching, more change, more of him removing the things from you that don't he doesn't want there and putting the things there that need to be there. Ask him. He'll do it. Give thanks for the Holy Spirit. Give thanks that you have this, this, this separator, this thing that makes you different from everyone else. Unbelievers don't have the Holy Spirit like we do. The Lord may give them a little bit, but that's so they can make the choice. That's so they can come around. That's so their eyes will be open. But there are people that deny it. Now, on, uh, to the Lord's credit, he knows who's who and, and what's what. He can get anybody he wants. So this is all in his hands. But this is, isn't an obscure thing. We know about this because the Bible tells us about it. The Holy Spirit lays a great big guilt trip on everybody to get them to see what they're doing is wrong. And so they can make the right decision. And we do. We start to read this and it makes sense to us. If a person reads the gospel, reads the Bible, and it doesn't click, it doesn't make sense with them, there's something wrong. But if you read that to a person where they actually see the words, they hear the words, I think something is something much different about hearing it to seeing it, but they actually read along with you and see it and it clicks, that's the Holy Spirit. If you read verses in the Bible and you've read them before and it never clicked and now all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, I understand what that means. That's the Holy Spirit. It's not us. What a blessing it is to have this wonderful Holy Spirit, this great restrainer. It was restrainer of holding us back from sinning, holding us back from the world, and holding the world back from us, keeping people from destroying themselves. If it were not for the Holy Spirit being on the earth today in the heart of every believer, people would have already wiped themselves out. It would have happened. Probably would have happened several hundred years ago if not a thousand years ago. It would have already happened. It had been done with. The restrainer restricts all those things, keeps all those things going the way they were supposed to go. Prophecy must be fulfilled. The Holy Spirit plays a big integral part in that. Now, you go into the scriptures and you see in the scriptures about the restrainer being removed. This restraining force is the Holy Spirit. A lot of people disagree with that. That's the only conclusion I can come to. Read the original language. Look what the original word is for that, and you'll see for yourself. <laughs> when that Holy Spirit was removed, everything changes. And here's what's really amazing about this. I bring this up for this one point. If the Holy Spirit resides within you. You go with him. When the Holy Spirit is taken from the earth, and there's a time coming when he will be, we go with him. Because the Lord will never take his Holy Spirit from us. Once the Lord has sealed us, once we are in, once we are in the sheepfold, once we are his, once we are marked out, once we are bought and paid for, that's it. There is no changing that. And you couldn't change it if you tried. Good luck. Actually, I don't wish you good luck. I hope you fail miserably <laughs> because I would much rather you stay in the grace of God. I would much rather you be here in the truth. The terrible fact is there's a lot of people that are fighting the Holy Spirit. Don't fight the Holy Spirit. Let him have his way. Your life is much more peaceful because of it. Your, the grace abounds because of it. It is a glorious thing to be found in, in the faith. To be found loving and looking to Jesus Christ for all things. To be a part of his church. Lord, we come before you this evening to give great gratitude to you. And to glorify you and to praise you and thank you for the wonderful blessings you pour on us every day. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I see the changes you're doing in other people. My father had an issue literally yesterday, and I see the changing. You're softening his heart. You're changing his views. You're, you're bringing him around to a greater understanding. Thank you, Lord. I thank you that you answered our prayers concerning him. I thank you that you answer our prayers concerning everybody we pray for. Sometimes before the prayer is even said, you answer it. Thank you that you honor us in this way. And so we honor you right back by thanking you for this, by glorifying you and praising you for this. What a wonderful work you're doing and what a wonderful work the Holy Spirit is doing in each of our hearts. Lord, thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit. I thank you for his work. I thank you for the work that, that has come down the lineages, down the lines, throughout history of all those that came before us, on whose shoulders we stand. All those who built on the foundation, on the rock, 
long before we did, and we're building on what they built on. I give thanks for all of them, all that went before us, all that gave their life for all this, all that died in you, and that we're going to see in heaven, all that are part of the family. I give thanks for your wonderful work on the cross. If you hadn't done that, none of us would have any hope, and there would still be people in Abraham's bosom waiting. In fact, it'd be pretty full right now. What a wonderful grace it is. What a wonderful mercy it is to have you as our Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you very much. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for evening devotion. Stay strong. Stay focused. Stay in the Word. Don't let people bring you down. If you see people around you that are starting to wander, stay in the truth. You may not be able to speak to them, but you living the example may be enough to bring them back to center. It may be enough to bring them in. And when the door opens to speak, speak. Speak truth to them. Give them scripture. Share these videos. My videos are free for anybody to share anywhere at any time. I don't put any restrictions on them. Tell people the truth. Share what you're learning with them. I share what I'm learning with you. Spread it around. Share it with them. Because there are people out there who are desperately looking for somebody to at least get them pointed in the right direction. And at the very least, that's what I'm doing here, is pointing people in the right direction. I'm not perfect at it. I'm not ever going to be perfect at it. But what an amazing thing to have a voice in the crying in the wilderness, to have a, a light shining as brightly as possible so that people can find their way to the narrow path to Jesus. And that's our goal, is to lead people to Jesus, to lead new believers to Jesus, and to lead old believers who have fallen away back to Jesus. So they will come back into the faith, come back into his grace, come back into the truth, and stand in glory with him. And we will all stand together as brothers and sisters, as family, connected in a way nobody will ever understand. Connected to our Lord in a way nobody will ever understand. As we are now a part of him. We're his body. He's the head. And we all play our part in the grand design of God's will. And the best is yet to come. We haven't even gotten to the good part yet. That's still just a little bit down the road. Just a little. We're going to see great things. And we'll all get to see them together. I love you all. I thank God for you all. I couldn't be more thankful and, and more happy to have people I've never met. Most of you I've never even talked to. To have such a wonderful, faithful group of people. At the very least, offering your prayers. At the very least, watching and sharing. I know who you are, even though I've never met you, even though I don't know your name. I know who you are, because we're all connected by the same Holy Spirit. Stay strong, stay focused, stay in the truth, and do whatever the Lord has given you to do, and do it with everything you have. Be faithful in it, and show integrity, and he will reward you openly. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.